Okay, I'm going to start actually by reading out some quotes from meetings that uh, I attended recently in Egypt. The problem of this country is capitalism, overheard in Giza. Why are there class differences between us and government ministers? They should be abolished, overheard in a meeting in the upper Egyptian province of Albania. We are being ruled by a bunch of thieves. They are the worst thieves since the time of the pharaohs. There is no middle ground. We have to take sides. We either stand with the robbed or we stand with the thieves. The road for reform has been blocked. There is no other way than to revolt. Overheard in a meeting in the Nile Delta province of Antalya. These meetings are not meetings of uh, revolutionary socialists. It's not meeting of uh, professional uh, activists. These are actually meetings of the Egyptian property tax collectors who already went on strike last year for three months during which tax collection dropped by 90% in Egypt and not only that there were 55,000 of them coordinating nationally their own moves and they mobilized from 5 to 10,000 of them to occupy downtown Cairo in front of the ministerial cabinet set up a camp where men and women, tax collectors, basically just camped out for a week demanding raising their salaries. And they managed to win and they raised their salaries by 325% after a three month strike. Now, to get anti-capitalist tax collectors or like tax collectors who are calling for abolition of capitalism, this is more or less something like the Pope suddenly waking up and saying that God is dead, more or less. And this is happening in the midst of the biggest and strongest strike wave uh, since, that the country has ever witnessed since the end of the Second World War. Now, among this, or in the midst of this militancy, I mean, how, how, how did we reach this stage? And what's the relationship of the current social explosions in Egypt and the anti-war movement. Now, I became politically active more or less around 10 years ago when I was still an undergraduate student. And I remember Egypt, what it looked like back then. Back then, Egypt was going through its own dirty war when the Islamist insurgents launched a campaign in order to topple the dictatorship of Hosni Mubarak. The reaction of the government was a dirty war, Latin American style where police checkpoints were all over the urban centers. People were disappearing. More new prisons were built. Uh, torture was applied systematically and got institutionalized to the extent that it doesn't only target political dissidents, but it also targets the ordinary Egyptians in ordinary police stations, not necessarily state security facilities. As student activists, around 10 years ago, if we had a meeting like that, then probably we should be expecting in a few minutes uh, plain clothes thugs who would just get in, they work with the government to smash this meeting, and most probably there will be state security agents waiting for us outside campus in order to kidnap student activists and torture them. Now, and also back then, no one could open his or her own mouth about Mubarak. At best, you can open your mouth about the regime, you can open your mouth about the government, but even to spell out Mubarak's name was a taboo. Now, things totally changed with the outbreak of the Palestinian Intifada in September 2000. For the first time since 1977, 1977, that's when we had a two-day worker uprising, a national uprising that was crushed by the army and by the army tanks in the streets. For the first time, people took to the streets. And it was mainly students from kindergarten schools all the way up to university students demonstrating on behalf of the Palestinians. But once you start mobilizing on behalf of the Palestinians, you start asking questions like, why is our government not doing enough to help the Palestinians? And then you start thinking, well, I mean, the Israelis even have an embassy that's just like a few yards away from us. And when the Palestinians try to escape from Gaza under for any condition, it's Egyptian police officers who open fire on them in the end. And it's the same government that's not doing enough to help the Palestinians. It's the same government that's giving us a bad educational system, a bad health system. Like, for example, I, I do recall uh, a pro-Lebanese uh, resistance strike that we had at my university around nine years ago, 
And although it started by chanting pro-Lebanese, pro-Palestinian slogans, by the end, we were discussing the Bilharsia disease, uh, the Bilharsia worms disease, that kills Egyptian peasants in, in Upper Egypt. So once you start mobilizing around regional issues in Egypt, I mean, the, the, the logical result was always looking domestically and increasing dissent domestically. In 2000, as I said, we had an outbreak of riots all throughout uh, the capital in solidarity with the Palestinians, and that was crushed by the police. In 2002, we had also a bigger wave of riots that were bigger than those in 2000, and they were the biggest since 1977, and that's when Sharon sent his tanks into the West Bank uh, cities, and that's when the Jenin massacre uh, happened. In 2003, with the, with the rise of the anti-war movement, on the 19th and the 20th of March, we had 50,000 Egyptians demonstrating in Tahrir Square, which is the biggest square in downtown Cairo, burning Mubarak's posters, burning the Western flags in front of the five-star hotels that we have in downtown, chanting not only anti-American and anti-Israeli slogans, but also anti-Mubarak slogans. Mubarak, whose name was a taboo, to the extent that whenever you wanted to refer to him, we used to talk about Soharto of Indonesia. If you mentioned the word Soharto in Cairo, this meant that you were actually talking about Mubarak. And some people would even say Mubarto. Um, so to reach from here to like wearing Mubarak's posters, that was like, I mean, a huge radicalization. And it's mainly thanks to the anti-war movement. Now, Following these riots in 2003, that's when you started uh, to witness the rise of the purely domestic dissident movement that's not mobilizing necessarily around regional issues. But in order to reach this mature level, we had to go through years of organizing just against the war or on behalf of the Palestinians. So we had the rise of the Kifaya movement in 2004, 2005, 2006. Kifaya is an Arabic uh, word for enough, and it was an anti-Mubarak uh, coalition that culminated in the events of the 2006 Cairo Spring, and that's when hundreds and thousands of activists took to the streets, occupied downtown Cairo, in solidarity with two judges who were going to get prosecuted uh, on bogus charges. They were reformist judges. The events were so similar to those that happened in Pakistan. Following the crushing of the Cairo Spring, that's when we had the rise in the industrial action in Egypt. And that happened starting from December 2006, when the biggest textile mill in the Middle East, located in the Nile Delta town of Mahalla, which is home to 27,000 workers working shoulder to shoulder in the same compound, went on strike for three days and they won. And you may be interested to know that actually the strike started by the women workers in that factory when 3,000 of them went on strike first and they started marching in the factory compound chanting where are the men, here we are the women and they stormed the sectors of the company of the spinning and weaving sectors that had their uh, male colleagues working and they shamed them into strike action from the moment they won in December up until today, the country is now going through its biggest and most sustained wave of strike action. And I'm just going to sum up by highlighting the importance of what you do here in Britain uh, for us in Egypt. Uh, all, all the time in Egypt we get into debates. So people like me on the secular left who have a certain vision about why wars are being conducted in our region. What, what, what we can do about it, but you know, the secular left is not the only force. I mean, we have Islamists, we have liberals, we have people from across the street. And there were those who were putting forward the thesis of the clash of civilization, that we're being attacked because we're Muslims, we're being attacked because the Jews and the Christians who control the world, they are coming now in order to destroy Islam. Now, when you took to the streets here in London in 2003, uh, on solidarity, uh, in solidarity with the people of Iraq and the Middle East, and you had one million people in the streets, this was a shock for so many people back home. They couldn't understand how come the white whiskey drinking infidels would take to the streets on their behalf. I mean, you confuse basically people who have this sort of thesis and you give us more boost. So I, uh, I have slips that have been like, distributed around, and I think there is more uh, back there with uh, Stuart. 
who uh, that has URL addresses uh, in English about some information about Egypt. So I urge you to check them out and please spread the word about what's going on. Thank you.